Hey, I'm Rob Ponsomi with Arduino. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're going to walk through the demos we have here at Embedded World North America. So first of all, you know, the news went out recently. We were acquired by Qualcomm, and with that acquisition comes the Uno Q board. And we have that in two different demos here. You'll see, first of all, running a live application, which just went to sleep. Um, this is our weather station application pulling in local sensor data, and then additionally pulling in uh, through an API call, regional weather information, and doing some lightweight analysis on that. And what's special about this board? So it's uh, really bringing uh, multi-core and multi-processor uh, architecture to our community of developers. It combines both an MCU from STM and then also a, uh, the Qualcomm uh, Q QRB2210, which is the Dragon Wing. So we're, all we're now able to bring uh, the full Debian experience to the Arduino customer base to, for developers to start developing even crazier uh, and fun projects. And, and what's the advantage of having this uh, yeah. multiple heterogeneous hybrid system? So that, that's a great question. Um, the MCU, which is where we're known, and most people have, that use Arduino love it, is real-time operating systems, right? So if you need fast response, you need quick actuation, the uh, MCU is really going to give that kind of performance, versus the MPU is a much heavier processor, allows you to do much more powerful applications. Think uh, edge-based AI, so facial recognition, um, local model analysis, web hosting, all the things that you want to do in a more advanced application now can be done. And by combining them, you can think of some applications like robotics where you want fast responses on inputs, but then also maybe pulling in gesture recognition for um, robotic actuation. Maybe you're looking to do uh, sensor analysis on the edge without sending it all to the cloud. That can now be done in conjunction with real-time operations. So it's got an NPU. Uh, we can accelerate the AI stuff? It has a, uh, a GPU on board, uh, not, not quite a neural processor, um, but it does have a dedicated GPU on board as well, which can do the accelerations. And for cameras, for example, we can handle a single camera from tw uh, 25 megapixels at 30 frames per second, or we can bring in multiple camera feeds uh, at 13 megapixels at that same 30 uh, frames per second mark. And it's affordable? Yeah. And truly, this is our, our two, uh, two, gig, two, gig, two gigabyte model starting at just $44 USD. That's so cool. Is it available now? Available now. Now, demand's pretty high, so a lot of our distributors are, are back ordered, but you know, within the next month, we'll have that all sorted out. So if you're interested in getting one, go ahead and get your name on the list, and it'll be arriving shortly. What are you showing here with this? So we're talking about how easy it is to build within that Debian experience and trying to model what we've done on the MCU side, we've come out with a new IDE specifically for the Uno Q. This is our app lab. It comes pre-installed on the board. And in this particular example, we're running everything off of the Uno Q, which is tucked in back here. So this is not a, not a PC. This is just running right off of the Uno Q natively. And here what we're looking at is the bricks. So if we go first to examples, you'll see that we have a ton of examples that come preloaded on the board. Everything from um, your standard Blink, where you get started with your microprocessor or microcontroller, all the way through image classification, facial recognition, uh, everything that you want to get started combining your sketches, Python, and localized AI models. Under the hood, those are all built by bricks. So here you'll see an ever-expanding library of modular uh, components that you can pull into your project. So the first one here, if you want to build your own SQL database, you can then tag it into audio classification, for example. Maybe you want to have a data push out to the Arduino cloud. All of that can be put together to create your own customized projects without having a ton of work to build all the individual components. So Arduino is so famous for uh, enabling even young students and everybody yeah. to do a whole bunch of projects. Is this going to just expand a whole bunch of mil possibilities now? Yeah, that's the idea because with having the other, other thing we didn't even mention yet, right? With having the MCU and the MPU on the same board, you can start the same Arduino experience that all the educators take advantage of today around the MCU component, and then they can expand that student's journey into Linux-based systems. And because we're just using the standard Debian image, we haven't forked it at all, we'll be able to take advantage of all the developments that come out, all the tutorials and community that already exists for Debian, continue to be something that our, our developer base can take advantage of as well as they begin so this journey. It's backwards compatible. Exactly. And with the full, what was there before? With, with a lot of all the developments and projects people have done before? Yeah. 
compatible. Completely compatible and on the hardware too. So if you notice, we're still in the Uno form factor. That means that any Uno shields, both uh, first party or third party shields that are available today are fully compatible with the Uno Q. And uh, maybe uh, like the students or the people experimenting don't need to do so much on the Cortex-A stuff. Yeah. They just do a little bit. Maybe they just yeah. try some AI stuff exactly. together with their project, right? Right. They can just add on a small feature to see how it goes, get some you know, experience, and then build that out from there. And what you'll see is, much like we have the, the ability to document your projects on our classic boards, we have an integration right into our project hub so that as users build new new models and experiences on the Uno Q, they're going to be able to share that with the community and then the whole community will be able to take advantage of that work. If it's a great uh, heterogeneous design, does that mean you can actually turn off the Qualcomm part and not even use any power on it if you don't need? I'm not sure on that question. I think today, even at the lowest power state, it still has the MPU turned on. Now, in a future firmware release, that might be changed. But as of right now, I believe that maybe both, it's just both like very low power. It doesn't consume too much. Yeah. Because some projects don't want to use too much power, right? Right. And it, well, a lot. Yeah, a lot of projects want to be mindful of battery consumption, power consumption, especially if it's going to be a mobile system. Um, and that's that's part of what we're talking about with the broader story here around our pro products. Uh, for example. Uh, you know, this is our, our Portenta C33. This is great for lightweight applications. It's, it's an MCU core and uh, really optimized for low power consumption, IoT at the edge, in the field. And so this new being part of Qualcomm yeah. is going to enable a lot of new developments for Arduino. Yeah, we're going to be able to continue our mission of democratizing technology. So we'll continue to come out with boards that are powered by all the other major silicon providers, right? We still have plans to come out with new new boards on the ST, uh, NXP, Renaissance models. But with being part of Qualcomm, now we get access to the more higher performance chipsets that they have, along with their technical talent that helps us unlock some of those key performance drivers that'll be really useful for our developer community. For example, that one is, is it ST and yeah, Qualcomm? Exactly. So is it a great to have those two? Like, you know, like uh, it actually enhances both of them to have the other one? I think the interoperability is key because it allows anyone who's interested to develop a solution that uses a combination of silicon. And especially when you're getting started in the world, you don't want to commit too heavily to one tool chain. And so by developing on our platform, you can take advantage of the best technology that's out there, find the right fit for your project. And then if you decide, hey, we want to move forward with this and we want to go to a chip down design or we want to use a SOM based design, you have that flexibility until you have to make a decision to commit down the road. And sometimes the, the big core, the Cortex A, could have the functionality of the MCU also. Yeah. And maybe it can do the same stuff also without the MCU or? Yeah, it really depends on you know what type of application you're running uh, on that MPU. For example, if you are just running some GPIO, right? You could easily do that on the MCU by itself. Or if you wanted to manage that as a custom container, if you're more comfortable in Linux, you could run that on the MPU. Are there many stories with uh, students or people who experimented with the Arduino and then went on to do a huge companies with their ideas and stuff like that? Oh, all over the place. If you look at you know, the number of, of universities that leverage our, our boards and our curriculum in their, uh, their STEM programs, that's part of the reason why we have a recurring active user base of over 33 million developers that download our ID every year. It's the foundational experience for a lot of engineers that start their career. And as they go into the world, they leverage this in their jobs around prototyping. And in some cases, we're even moving with them all the way to for production scale with our, our pro line and some of our other parts as well. Everything you do is open source? Everything we do is open source. Um, Even the design of the board? The design of the board is already published and online. So people can take part of it and do another board? Exactly. And Qualcomm is meeting us there too. What you'll see is that the, this, uh, this chipset that's used in the NOQ is also going to be available now for any developer who wants to make their own chip down version. So you can get started on the UNOQ, you can build your own applications, and then you can build your own device using the Q QRB2210. Nice, and you can uh, you can use an open source GPU driver. Yep, there is some very really good one now. 
Yeah. Yeah, so you can do, uh, I don't know, emulation of games or whatever you want. Yeah, what, I mean, we've got a very popular demo uh, out of our team in Italy that have already put together a full gaming emulator based on the Uno Q, along with additional control and, and LED actuation. Could you run a self-driving car off this board? You know, one of the, the folks at our launch uh, did a, 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 a driving vehicle that was based just on where their face was being recognized by the camera for steering. So the world is really your oyster by, by using this platform. Humanoid robots? It's a possibility. I think, especially as we launch more capable versions, right, our four gig model is going to be coming out later this year for, for general availability. We're going to have more processing power on the board, and so the opportunity to do more memory intensive op applications just increases. Do you think your community is excited with this being part of Qualcomm? Are people uh, very positive and saying that there, you know, a lot of cool stuff is going to happen? Yeah. You're going to be able to expand what you do? I think so. So overall, you know, the team's very excited. The community that I've spoken to has been very, very excited about it as well. Obviously, there, there's some interest to see how things develop. Uh, but generally, you know, we're going to be able to expand access to the technology. It, it's in line with our, our mission to democratize technology, make it easy for anybody that affordable. wants to get started. And affordable, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Don't get fooled by fake HDMI products. Only source authentic HDMI products from licensed HDMI adopters and authorized manufacturers and resellers to ensure compliance. Counterfeit or unlicensed products can cause poor performance. Certified HDMI products undergo official testing for safety and spec compliance. Avoid brand damage, warranty issues, and customer dissatisfaction from unlicensed products. Long-term cost savings come from reliable, genuine HDMI solutions. Unlicensed products may lack support and pose safety risks. Use certified HDMI cables with official HDMI certification labels. Report suspected counterfeit products at hdmi.org slash resource slash infringe. Thanks to our global partners for helping keep the HDMI brand real and ensuring consumers get the experience they deserve.